Hello students, in our last topic we have studied about the combustion, like what is combustion, uh, even the types of combustion and about the ignition temperature and we have also studied like for ignition temperature, for like for burning of a substance or for combustion, what are the conditions, okay, what are the actually what are the requirements for the combustion that we have studied. Now, in this topic, first of all, we will start in this lecture, we will start with uh, what are the requirements for the uh, or what are the conditions in which the combustion can be stopped, ok. Because as we say that combustion is very important process for us, ok, burning is very essential process, it is, it is very, very important for us, but in the same way, the combustion sometimes the control of combustion is also very very important for us ok. So, uh, just take the example of uh, when there is a forest fire, obviously when there is a forest fire it is very very difficult to control such fire uh, and sometimes even I can say it, it becomes impossible also to control forest fire. Many a times there you might have observed fire uh, maybe in some uh, shops, sometimes you know uh, in the factories, houses you might have observed or heard ok. You might have also heard about when a person uh, burns ok and suppose uh, just if I ask you what uh, can you do to stop combustion, to stop burning of that person. The first thing which comes in my mind or will come in your mind is the word to uh, put little amount of you know to put soil on the person ok or to cover the person with the blanket. When I talk about when I say about to cover the person with the blanket again see it becomes difficult to look for a blanket or to go to get the blanket and put on the person. But to put the soil is the easiest way ok on a burning person to stop or to control the fire. Then what actually happen, happens when a person is throwing uh, soil on a burning person or when blanket uh, or when a burning person is covered with the wrapped with the blanket, what are the like what are the like what change in the conditions are, what will be the change and for that reason the combustion gets stopped. So, we will just have a look uh, on what are the conditions, how the fire fire stopped, how the combustion stopped. So, children uh, when we talk about that on a burning person soil is spread. So, what will happen? The person who is burning that means when, when something is burning it requires oxygen and when soil is thrown on the person so that uh, that cut that uh, contact with the oxygen gets cut off ok. So, that is the reason when soil is spread again when we talk about blanket the same thing happens that when blanket is thrown or when the person burning person is wrapped with the blanket. So, what, what will happen the again the oxygen ok oxygen which is required for burning that would not be available ok that would not be available and so the combustion will get decreased. Now, the third thing which comes in mind is to throw water ok. To uh, extinguish a fire many a times water is used, most of the time actually water is used. You might have seen in the movies or uh, any maybe in the real uh, we, uh, you might have seen in real like uh, fire is being extinguished with the help of the water ok. Fire brigade comes and the uh, workers they try to extinguish the fire by throwing lot amount of water. Again what is happening when water is being thrown ok, when water is uh, you know is poured on the fire, why the fire get extinguished, why does not it keeps on like why does not like uh, why this continuity is broken. So, children see for understanding this we will again come to the point, what point the three things which are very very important for the combustion ok. The three points, the three conditions which were required for the combustion was see
requirements for the combustion. Okay. We have studied this. So, what were the three conditions which are required for the combustion? Just we will have a look upon that. So, first thing was what? Presence of combustible material. Okay, that means the material which has to be burned, okay, that is required. Okay, second point ignition temperature. Now, what is the meaning of ignition temperature? This also we have studied that minimum temperature which is required for a substance to catch fire that minimum temperature okay at which the substance starts burning okay now the third point presence of oxygen okay even the presence of oxygen is very very essential these are the three points which are required for the what for the process of combustion. Okay, you might be thinking that when we have discussed these points, so why I am writing this again? So the reason behind is now we are going to learn or now we are going to study what are the points which are what are the requirements, what are the conditions which are required for the for what? for the uh, extinguishing of uh, fire or to extinguish the combustion ok. So, now just we will have a look we will just have a opposite thing ok. Now, when I want to extinguish the fire obviously what has to be done when I wanted uh, something to burn I need these things ok. I need all these three th things means what three conditions. First of all I need the substance which is burning then the substance has to be brought to that particular temperature at which it starts burning and the third thing is the presence of oxygen because without oxygen the substance cannot undergo combustion. Now these are the points which are required for the combustion. Now what are the requirements what are the principle? Okay, principles for okay, principles for extinguishing fire or principles for fire or combustion. Okay, you can write it in both the ways. Now, please try to understand now when we say like these are the conditions when a substance can catch fire then if I am looking for the points by which the fire can be stopped. So, what can be the things ok what can be the conditions which can stop a substance from burning ok. So, I am when I am saying presence of combustible material. So, obviously absence of what combustible material. Now, when I am saying ignition temperature that means when a substance should reach to a temperature to that minimum temperature where a substance can catch fire. Now, that was to catch fire. Now, to stop fire what is required to bring down the substance ok to bring down to reduce the temperature from that ignition temperature ok. Now, third is presence of oxygen that means absence of oxygen or to cut off the supply of the oxygen. So, the first point is here children 
presence of combustible material so removal okay removal of combustible substance that means the substance which is burning has to be removed okay now second point is ignition temperature that means to bring the substance to that minimum temperature at which it can catch fire now i have to stop the fire so what is the requirement now to so bringing down a substance bringing down a substance below its ignition temperature okay now the third one is presence of oxygen so obviously what should be the third point cut off cut off of what oxygen okay cut off of oxygen if you feel that this two of are not comfortable so even absence of oxygen you can write any way okay if you feel that presence of oxygen and okay if you feel that this two of doesn't suits here so even you can write cut off the supply of oxygen okay cut off the that was also correct no problem cut off of supply rather i should rub it cut off the supply of oxygen okay now these are the three points now which are required for extinguishing any fire that means if we want to stop the fire what are the three points removal of combustible substance that means to remove that substance which is responsible for the fire or bringing down a substance below its ignition temperature now what is the meaning of bringing down the substance below its ignition temperature it means a substance which is required for burning okay not to supply not to allow the substance to reach to that temperature okay now suppose 200 220 is the temperature which is required for a substance to burn so reduce the temperature do not allow the substance to reach to that temperature okay is the meaning of what bringing down a substance below its ignition temperature now third point is presence of oxygen so here we will write absence of oxygen or cut off the supply of oxygen or do not allow the water Uh, I'm so sorry, water. I, I said, but do not allow the substance to get oxygen. Okay. Now these are the three points which can be okay, which can be very very essential to extinguish the fire. Now when I said which can be essential, why did I say like this? Because even in when we say that these are the three conditions, tell me one thing. Can we can we uh, really work upon this? removal of combustion okay because see if you talk about the extinguishing of fire okay so generally you might have seen in theaters hospitals okay uh, uh, maybe you know in the schools in the hospitals okay what you might have seen fire extinguisher okay that red uh, that red color uh, cylinder which is there available in like you know it is always there maybe in hospital banks uh, maybe in the school offices it is placed so you might have seen fire extinguishers okay so 
when I say like fire extinguishers are there and that is there to uh, stop the combustion process. So, if I have to stop the combustion process can we remove the combustible substance from the banks, from the theatres, from the schools? No, we cannot remove the combustible substance because you talk about anything. In the theatre if you talk about the seats, the chairs, we talk about the curtains, ok. All these are what? All these will catch fire. If we talk about school, the school benches, the papers, ok, all like plenty of things are there which will catch fire, rather all these will increase the uh, intensity of the fire, ok. So, we cannot work upon the first one, ok. Many in many cases we cannot work upon the first case like we cannot remove the combustible substances. If I talk, if I say that in your house there should be no combustible substance, is it possible? It is not at all possible to remove combustible substance, ok. So, now, if we have to extinguish a fire, we have to work upon the next two, which one bringing down a substance below its ignition temperature and to cut off the supply of the oxygen. These are the two points which are required to extinguish the fire, ok. Third, like the first one, it is not possible for us to remove the substance, but at least we can work upon the any two, ok. Now, uh, I as before uh, explained this, we were talking about the water, that when water is thrown on a burning substance, what happens, ok, the fire get extinguished, the fire stops, the combustion stops, what does actually, uh, what are, what is the reason, why does the, the fire stops, because children when we throw water on the burning substance, a substance is burning that means it is burning at particular temperature. Hmm? I told you that for burning of a substance ignition temperature is required that typical that minimum temperature is required at which if it is uh, uh, it, if it is brought in contact with the fire it will catch fire, is not it? that minimum temperature is required. If we reduce that minimum temperature, ok, that reduce that minimum temperature means if we do not allow the substance to be on that minimum temperature. Uh, so, what will happen? The fire will get extinguished. So, that is what water does, ok. When water is spread, uh, when water is thrown on some substance, so what will happen? Automatically the temperature of that substance will come what it will reduce. When the and when the temperature of the substance will get reduced from the ignition temperature obviously the combustion will stop. Now, second very important thing hap uh, uh, which uh, which happens due to the uh, uh, like when we throw water is the formation of water vapor ok. In when we uh, throw water due to which the ignition temperature the substance do not uh, remain to the ignition temperature, the fire gets stopped along with that near the burning substance even the water vapor get like it, it is uh, get spreaded. Due to the presence of water vapor again the substance cannot burn ok, because the substance cannot attain that uh, cannot attain that temperature ok. So, that is the reason why water is uh, spread on the why the water is spread on the burning substance. That means to first of all to bring down the substance from the ignition temperature ok. That is the reason the, the as soon as the, the substance comes down to its uh, temperature the fire get stopped ok. But uh, see we have discussed three uh, things first of all to throw the soil because that is the easiest way the simplest way to uh, to not to stop the person from burning. If a person is burned uh, in front of you, he is, uh, he is burning uh, ok, his body is uh, into fire. So, what you can do? You can just the soil is there only you can just spread the soil. What it will do? It will cut off the supply of the oxygen ok. Now, second thing which we uh, discuss is to wrap the person into blanket. Again the oxygen is cut off. Third thing which we studied is to throw water that means what will happen the substance will come down from its ignition temperature and 
what will happen the combustion will get stopped. Now do you think always uh, can we use water, can we use water always to stop the combustion, can we use water always to stop any kind of fire, any type of combustion, just think, no we cannot do it ok. See for example, if uh, the fire, uh, if, if you know uh, the fire is due to the maybe due to the electric circuit that means maybe any kind of reason which is related to electricity ok. When we say that any kind of reason which is related to electricity the fire is set up, the fire is there due to some uh, problem in the electricity ok due to some problem in electricity means when due to the short circuit the, pro, the, uh, the, uh, the fire has started. So, can you throw water over there ok. The second thing now suppose the uh, in kitchen uh, your mother is uh, cooking ok. She has kept the oil in the pan and she, she like you know somehow it happens like the oil starts burning ok. Can you put water into, into that burning oil ok. So, two conditions I am talking about ok, two conditions first one is what children when the, uh, the fire is due to some electrical appliances in their electrical appliances or due to some electrical appliances and the second condition which I am talking about is fire in the oil ok. So, in this in both these conditions can you throw water? you cannot throw water in both these conditions. Why children why cannot you throw the water in both these conditions because in first condition ok, in first condition when I say that the fire is due to the what I said electricity ok, when the fire is due to the electricity then what will happen if we try to throw water there is you know lot of chances for the you know the current will spread, even the person who is throwing water may have uh, chances you know, to get collapsed. So, this is the worst uh, idea to try to extinguish the electric fire with the help of the water. Here I have given you two conditions, first of all the fire due to electricity and fire due to oil. When we talk about the fire due to electricity, if we try to extinguish the fire with the help of the water then this is the worst idea ok. We cannot do it in any conditions because the person you know the if the fire is due to electricity the person who is trying to throw the water really uh, can be in the you know, worst situation because the current can get spread ok. And the second condition oil again the water is the first idea. That means in these two conditions we cannot use water ok. That means water cannot be used to extinguish such kind of fire. Now how uh, when I say like there are different ways to extinguish different kind of fires. That means I am seeing a normal fire when the paper catches fire maybe the building catches fire we can spread we can throw water and it is done ok. The fire the fire brigades come and the workers they throw the water ok. But when the second and third case when I say the, uh, uh, the fire is due to electricity electrical fire or maybe the, the fire is there due to the oil. So, now what has to be done? So, children you know when we talk when we say that fire extinguishers are there ok. The uh, uh, for different offices different places fire extinguishers are there. So, you know there are a different kind of fire extinguishers which are used in different kind of fires ok. There are different kind of fire extinguishers which are used in different kind of fires. That means it does not mean that the cylinder that that red color cylinder becomes blue or maybe different in structure no. We will just have a look how these uh, fire extinguishers can be uh, used you know 
like why it can be used at different places because these are made in a the solution which is there are little bit different which produce different reactions that is the reason one can be used at the place where the uh, fire is due to the electricity and at the other one can be used where the fire is due to the oil okay so now first of all we will try to start we will try to read, we will try to understand the basic concept of the fire extinguishers. So, now we will talk about fire extinguishers. Okay. So, Now, what is the fire extinguisher? How does it works? Okay, so the basic structure is what what we have seen at I told as different places, maybe in the hospital, uh, maybe in the banks, maybe in the school. Okay, hospitals. So different places. The normal basic structure is what see a cylinder. Okay, which is of what color, which is of red color. Okay, so this is what a metallic cylinder. Okay, a metallic cylinder. Now, inside this, now inside this solution, first of all, what is there? A metallic cylinder is there which we all know what uh, it is made of, it is a metallic one and it is of a red color. Now, inside this a solution is filled, okay, which is what sodium bicarbonate, okay. Now, inside this one glass tube is there in this glass tube okay what is filled concentrated sulfuric acid is there okay concentrated sulfuric acid is there now this is closed by a knob okay this is closed by a knob. Now, again over here what will be there here now one tube comes out ok one tube comes out and again it has a nozzle sort of thing ok. So, first of all what is there a metallic cylinder is there ok what is a metallic cylinder is there inside this sodium bicarbonate solution is filled there is a glass tube ok there is a glass tube in this glass tube concentrated sulfuric acid is there it has one nozzle which is attached to one tube ok this one is knob ok. So, this is the simplest you know actually the basic structure of any ok what is there this is a very very basic structure of any fire extinguisher what it is please try to understand this outline ok this outline is what it is this one is made up of what uh, this is a metallic structure ok this is a metallic structure ok this one is a metallic structure which we all see from the outside now this is a metallic structure which is of red like this one is red in color inside this metallic structure sodium carbonate is filled. Now, here is one glass tube 
in this glass tube concentrated sulfuric acid is there. Here this one is the knob like it is closed ok. Now here some like hooks are there from where it can be hanged from the back side. Here one tube comes out to the tube again one nozzle is there ok this one is what nozzle ok. Now to this again what is there here this one is nozzle a very small opening is there. Now this is the basic structure of any fire extinguisher ok that means a metallic cylinder which is filled by sodium bicarbonate solution inside that is a glass bottle this glass bottle is filled with sulfuric acid has got one knob at the top has got one tube also and it has got one nozzle. Now what will happen like how does it work children again to tell you it works like what are the two things which can be done two things to bring down a substance below its ignition temperature and to cut off the supply of the oxygen. Now when I talk when I say the like what is the process how the things how the things get you know what how to do what is there what are the process what happens inside that the fire get extinguished. So children when like you know what happens on striking this fire extinguisher ok on striking this fire extinguisher the sulfuric acid which is filled up there in the glass bottle. Please try to understand on striking this metallic cylinder on the ground ok what happens this glass tube which has got sulfuric acid in it it gets broken ok it gets broken and it get mixed up with the sodium bicarbonate. When sulfuric acid concentrated sulfuric acid mixed up with what sodium bicarbonate then what is formed children carbon dioxide is formed and along with that even water is formed ok. Carbon dioxide is formed along with that water is formed. Now when the carbon dioxide and water is formed actually so what will happen due to the pressure it get you know it just rushes out from here ok and it you know the water can water is formed and this water can be there uh, you know for the one minute actually it can uh, be there it can go to the length of 30 meters actually it can be there for at least one minute and here you know what is happening like what is the principle it is working upon what when carbon dioxide is released ok when carbon dioxide comes out children so what is happening carbon dioxide is replacing oxygen ok carbon dioxide is replacing oxygen that means what the supply of oxygen is what stop that means the removal of oxygen or cut off of oxygen or the O2 is replaced by CO2 ok. <coughs> so this when carbon dioxide is released what is happening O2 that means this point starts working that means the supply of oxygen is now like it is not there now oxygen is not available. So this will be the first point first thing why the fire will extinguish ok it will start what it will like get reduced ok. Now again when I say when water is also released when water is also released then what will happen the ignition temperature of that substance will come down ok. So both the things are happening children see when the fire extinguisher like what happens on striking the fire extinguisher the glass bottle gets broken sulfuric acid here it was there in the glass tube so it gets broken it get mixed up with the sodium bicarbonate and when sodium bicarbonate and sulfuric acid get mixed up so carbon dioxide and water is formed. When carbon dioxide gas is released that means oxygen is being cut like the supply of oxygen get reduced ok. When the supply of oxygen get reduced that means the burning get 
reduced why because for you know burning for combustion sufficient amount of oxygen is essential sufficient amount of oxygen is required okay so when sufficient amount of oxygen is not available that means the fire will come down again the second thing the carbon dioxide like you know water along with the carbon dioxide the water is also coming out when the water comes out again the substance comes down from its ignition temperature when the substance comes down from its ignition temperature that means now the substance is not there where it's not there means where the substance is not Uh, able to gain to attain the ignition temperature that minimum temperature which is required for the substance to burn okay so that is the reason like you know both the things both the things both the conditions comes together over here and that is the reason the fire get extinguished okay that is the reason why the fire gets extinguished we'll just have a quick just of this like first of all a metallic cylinder okay now this metallic cylinder is filled with sodium bicarbonate okay inside here one glass bottle is there now this glass bottle is filled up with sulfuric acid on striking the sulfuric acid comes in contact with sodium bicarbonate which give rise to carbon dioxide and water when carbon dioxide comes out obviously the level the uh, the supply the availability okay the presence of oxygen get reduced okay and this is the first reason why the fire get reduced the second even the water comes out that means what the water is doing water is bringing the substance below its ignition temperature and these are the two reasons which start acting at the same point simultaneously and thus the fire gets extinguished okay now this was okay this kind of fire extinguisher this is the first type which is known as soda acid okay soda acid fire extinguisher okay this is the first type which is known as soda acid fire extinguisher now we will talk about now now we'll talk about the second type okay now the second type of fire extinguisher is what it is foam type okay foam type of fire extinguisher okay again few things are basic which i told you what are the basic things like metallic cylinder okay metallic cylinder which has got what sodium bicarbonate that means saturated solution saturated solution of sodium bicarbonate okay now in that soda acid okay that soda acid what was there and soda acid what was there a glass tube was there glass tube okay in this concentrated solution of h2so4 was there okay now here what will be there in foam type of fire extinguisher okay aluminum sulfate okay aluminum sulfate is there in where it is present in the glass tube okay it is present there in the glass tube now along with the sodium bicarbonate <coughs> one more solution saponin okay now this saponin is added where in sodium bicarbonate okay sodium bicarbonate 
Okay. Now I will not put the bracket. Bracket is for the soda one. Now just try to understand, children. There are different types of fire extinguisher. We are going to talk about three types of fire extinguisher. First one is soda acid. Second is foam type, and the third one is what the carbon tetrachloride. Okay. The third one is carbon tetrachloride fire extinguisher. Now, when we talk about the first type, okay, when we talk about the first type, soda acid fire extinguisher, so metallic body inside that sodium carbonate is there. This one is glass tube inside that sulfuric acid is filled. Okay, now here in Form type what is happening children, here metallic cylinder, inside the metallic cylinder saturated solution of sodium bicarbonate is there, okay. but in so this one instead of having sulfuric acid what is there, aluminum sulphate is there, what is there, aluminum sulphate is there, see aluminum sulphate is there. Now, Along with aluminum sulphate, what is there? Saponin solution is also added. Okay, saponin solution is also added to sodium bicarbonate. That means, what is the difference, children? Here, in place of sulfuric acid, here in foam type of so this thing fire extinguisher, aluminum sulphate is added, and here with saturated sodium bicarbonate, along with this saponin is so, here saponin is added. Okay. So, these are the two things. Which are the two things? The addition of replacement of rather to say sulfuric acid is replaced, sulfuric acid is replaced by aluminum sulphate. Okay. This is the first one and second one is what? Like the presence of saponin. So, these are the two difference. Okay. These are the two difference which is there okay, between the what one? This one is foam and that is soda acid. Now, the third one. The third one is carbon. What like, uh, now first of all I will have to clean this so that I can continue over there. 